Um, I hope you're enjoying having more access to practice. Um, um, I think we've had two really good days, very physical for spider days. I think we've come out pretty healthy. Jaden Wilson uh, went out late uh, with a with a hamstring pull. I don't know how bad it is. I haven't had to talk to Ron. Not Ron. Um, haven't had time to talk to Ron Corson at Georgia. I haven't talked to him for a while, but <laughs> uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to Dave about him. I, li I really like the feel of practice, uh, the enthusiasm of the football team, and uh, been proud of the first two days. We won't go uh, back to back again until uh, the practice right before uh, the spring game. So I thought they fought through it very good and uh, we're very, very pleased with the first two days. So you uh, didn't do the two minute today. Were you just kind of really pleased with the way practice went or it wasn't part of the script? No, I, I went, uh, I went four minutes over practice yesterday and I told them I'd try to buy it back and to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, once Jaden pulled up a little bit, I was I was more concerned about because we have taken more reps than what we normally do, and I was more concerned about pulls and things of that nature in that two minute than I was actually running the two minute drill. So we we got we got one in as you know yesterday, and and uh, I want to make sure I stayed on time with the kids, so I bought the four minutes back. What have you thought of the quarterback depth so far, and what went into? Taylor going out with the first group, basically. Well, obviously, Taylor um, has – we've seen some out of him before, you know, with the walks and all this kind of stuff and meeting time he puts in and all that kind of stuff. So, it's it was different uh, than throwing a guy in at the, with the ones uh, the first day of practice because the rules have allowed us to do more before practice starts. Um but I, I like where we're at with the quarterbacks. I think there's, you know, they're battling in there. Um, and uh, I think Malachi had a better day today than he did on uh, Thursday. Uh, Chris is doing well. I, I like where KJ's at. Uh, Taylor's doing a fine job. So um, I like where they're at. They like each other. They're competing hard against each other. And, and, uh, the one thing I'm seeing a little bit more out of them this year is, uh, you know, they they all seem to possess really good leadership qualities and and take ownership of their own mistakes, but yet uh, uh, have really good leadership skills. That's what you have to have at the quarterback position. Coach, the young, I mean, transfer defensive backs, three of those guys back there. What have you seen from them? Miguel Mitchell, Otis, is the one that we've just seen partial practice you know he had the foot so we're trying to be smart with him uh nico slaughter has been really good uh has done a nice job in his two days uh cuddy uh, marquise robinson uh has also very competitive uh, and uh, has also done a nice job i think i think where they land on the depth chart i don't know but we, we hit on and we've seen enough about it out of miguel as well but I think we hit on all three of those. Where they land on the depth chart, I don't know yet, but uh, I've been pleased with those guys. And I'll be honest with you, with Jaden Allen and Selman Bridgers, they, they've done some – Bridges, they've done some really nice things in uh, team and in coverage. Yeah, R.J. Johnson and Tevis, Mitchell, Tevis Metcalf, I'm sorry, got interceptions. Yeah. Can you talk about just – those young guys making plays. Yeah, year. you know, RJ's very quick, you know, he's got he's long and uh you know didn't do a lot last year. Um and that's okay, you know, that's okay. But he came back, he didn't go in the portal. And I think it's starting to pay off for him. You know, obviously he had a good off season. That that helped him as well because he needed some strength. Uh Tevis Metcalf is a is a baller. I mean, he's a tough guy. Uh obviously come from the Metcalf family, but uh knowledgeable, come from a really good high school, knowledgeable player. Uh I told him after he picked the pass, this the next play when he redirected the slot to me was even a better play than the one that he picked. And I told him that. So he, he put two really, really good 
and he had more, but he put two really good plays together. Football is important to him, and I think he's going to be a good player for us. Uh, what, curious the plan on quarterback. Do you plan to keep tailing with the first group? Are you going to rotate him around a little bit? Yeah, I don't know, uh, Trey, to be honest with you. That'll be something after today's practice, and we'll, we'll meet this afternoon after we all get the tape uh, watched, and uh, I'll meet with the offense about – uh, 420 today and assuming all the recruiting will allow us to get to that point. Um, but uh, then we'll decide what we do there. Um, so that's just something I, I really don't know the answer to right now, to be honest with you. Um, a couple of the new backs, um, Jaquinta Jackson yeah. and, um, and Braylon Russell. Braylon's got some thighs on him. What, what are your thoughts on, on what those guys have done so far? I love them. You know, I think uh, they bring something to that room, you know, and, and, uh, Brighton is fast, you know, I mean, he, 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 but when he gets turned north to south now, it's, there's a, it's a load coming at you. But the thing I've seen about him, Trey, to be honest with you, is his vision. He got really good vision. And, uh, and I, you know, we always, we saw JJ jump cut today and, and things of that nature and, and, and uh, make some guys miss other than just running around them or running over them, you know, and, and those are some things. Anytime you have freshmen and portal guys, you're just, every time they do something, you're going, I didn't see that on film. I didn't, you know, and it's been in a positive way, you know, um, watching JJ's Utah tape, it was a lot about speed and, and running over guys, but I mean, he's got some, uh, ability to miss in a in a small area, make guys miss in a small area. And so does Braden Russell. So I've been really pleased with the addition to those two guys. Really have. Now we haven't been able to tackle them yet. So we'll have to figure that out. And you know how that is. Pad's gonna want to guy usually doesn't stay the same. He either gets better or he he's not quite as good when guys are running at him knocking the crap out of him, you know. So we'll see what happens then. Well, it's on the offensive line group and in the transfers with the first team specifically. Yeah, I, 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 Coach Mateus has done a really good job with those guys. I think, uh, you know, everything starts outside in to me. In other words, you got to get you, you got to have two tackles that can play. And you got to have a center, and uh, I've been really pleased with Nichols. Um, um, Junior Carmona is a he's a player. And uh, and Keyshawn has he's he's really done a nice job. Those guys have been, and it's not only just that they're playing pretty good. You know, again, it's non padded, but uh, they're playing pretty good. It's what they brought to the room. You know, they brought field presence. Guys who understand how to uh, win and understand how to motivate things of that nature. But they 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 brought an older skill set to the room and. Uh, you know, you look at a Marion Harris, how much he's improved to this point, and Tykees Crawford and Braun and Kudis, and those guys have, have improved. And I think it's because of the strength and all that, but it's also because of – I think Eric Mateus has done a really good job with them. And I think the older kids are not selfish. They're, they're hardworking kids, and they, they kind of are showing how these guys need to be, and, and they're following along with that. Really, really happy with that group. So you you had Stromberg at center, then Limmer. Now you're playing Nichols there with the first team. You feel okay with it after having you know two really consistent guys? Yeah, there? I really do. Um, yeah, I think that's his spot. And uh, the one thing about it is, is Amari Wiggins has been out. Uh, he's been into some indie and some things of that nature. But um, we've got to find out where he, you know, where he is. Um, Edmondson's done a nice job in there. You know, Eric moved him to center when he came in, keeping Street as a guard, you know. And uh, uh, But I've been – I think that's Nichols' spot, you know. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not talking about depth. I, I think that's where he can become a really good SEC player and draftable player and all that stuff, play at center. You know, I knew him for a long time. I offered him, I think, when he was a freshman, maybe at the end of his freshman year when I was at Georgia. And uh, if we offered you at that point in time at Georgia, you you had to be really, really special, and he was in that camp. So just uh, I think we found the right spot for him.
It seems like Rashawn DeBinion has made some pretty impressive catches so far. I mean, as a receiving back, how do you think he is? You know, he's he's always been a good receiver out of the backfield. Um, but I think right now, you know, he's older, he's stronger. I think he's got more confidence. Uh, I think the line, the offensive line is instilling confidence. You know, if your offensive line is playing pretty well and things of that nature, your whole team will uh, get a little bit better. I think they're helping him with his confidence too. But he he's always been able to catch the ball. He's catching it well now. Spence was in here yesterday and we talked about like how excited he is to kind of be a leader in this season. I mean, were there any off-season conversations you had with him? Just you can naturally look at the depth chart and see a bigger role and just what have you seen from him and his growth to, to right now? Well, I think those guys, um, even, you know, obviously we've talked to them, but I think they could see it, you know, that that they're sitting in there with, you know, Sori would be the older guy, and he's not old, you know, but he would be the older guy. And then you have those three guys, and it's Spence, Sanford, Dean, and obviously Juju Pope. But uh, I think those guys see their opportunity. And uh, Dean had a fantastic practice today. And, uh, but I think, Anytime you think you're getting ready to play, I believe that you prepare a little bit better and, you know, you don't prepare in your mind as I'm a freshman running down on the kickoff team. And uh, I think it's been exciting for those kids. And, again, I'll say it again, it's, you know, you can be a good player. Uh, you just – sometimes you need to get the experience. And uh, I've, I've thought they were good players last year. They just didn't quite have any experience. And this year um, – this spring ball will give them that experience and we'll go from there. But I, I, I like them. And, and Tyrone is really kind of, it seems like he's got good chemistry with Taylor and he's made some good plays. What has, you know, what have you seen from him growth wise? And uh, cause you were, before we even got to see practice, we're kind of giving some endorsements for just expecting big things from him. Yeah. You look at those two, there's, there's a bunch of them, but you know, Andrew Armstrong and Broden have been the guys that have, I don't know. They've taken their. You guys have been at practice. Seems like they've taken their game to a new level here. Um, Roden just needed confidence. Now he was hurt and things of that nature, and then he and he kind of uh, uh, got behind a little bit on on learning and things of that nature because of his injury. But uh, as you've seen, he's he's very talented, and and uh, I feel I feel at this point in time I feel really good about our receiving receiving core. Guys, Nico. I mean, we know what Landon Jackson can do at that end, but you got Nico, Qu Quincy, and Anton. Mm -hmm. Talk about those three kids. Anybody else want to? But and Nico's three. made a lot of plays. You know, he has a uh, good player playing hard, really in good, great shape. So he's going hard all the time. Uh, Anton, he's he probably still can, he needs to continue to get in better shape. Uh, uh, but he's very, very strong and long. I'm really excited that he's here. Quincy, um, talented now and big. And Quincy's going to be a really good player. He was working hard. Uh, those two young guys, uh, Kavion Henderson, they played, and Charlie Collins, they played 100 miles an hour. They may be out of a gap here and there every now and then or rush too deep on the quarterback, but they're going – you can't evaluate or you you can't figure out what a kid is unless he goes full speed and they you you know exactly what you have in those two guys they they like the game and I've been proud of those uh, those six guys how do you think the offense has picked things up with coach Petrino's system through two days uh, the greatest thing and I think the NCAA understood that you're going to have each team are going to have a lot of new players you know and so they allowed us to have walkthroughs and meetings and things of that and I say things of that nature too much but walkthrough and meetings I'm trying to get better at that I got a lot of flaws as as I've found out and I knew before um but um Well, you asked about how they picked up Bobby's offense. Seemed to be pretty good, doesn't it? And we've got we've got quite a bit in, and you can tell by the speed, you know, how fast does a guy play, or whether he's thinking about his assignment or he's thinking about where's my fit and what am I doing and what's my depth of my route and all that kind of stuff. So, I think anytime you 
are quoted as a good coach or a brilliant coach and or whatever that whatever the terms that Bobby's had and they it's a, your ability first and foremost to teach and then obviously your mind has to be a little bit different than others but which his is but it's the ability to teach it's the ability to communicate and uh, he's he's exceptional at that and I, I believe so is Ronnie Faust and Eric and them, those guys have done a really good job of buying into Coach Petrino's system. We saw C.J. Brown get some reps with the twos today, made several nice catches. What have your, been, your early impressions of him? I love him. I mean, obviously he's from real close here, and we want great success for him, but he's earned that. He's a, he's a more mature, older kid than what you – you know what I mean, than what a, a high school is supposed to be going to prom here in a few weeks, which he – I'm sure he still will, but he's um, – I thought he was a really good player. I think he's better than what I thought he was going to be. Keon Stewart uh, during one-on-ones today was step-for-step step with Isaiah Satania, and I just feel like you don't see that super often. What have you seen from him? Well, I'm glad you saw it because I was down with the offensive line, you know. <laughs> 31 minutes of Indy for me. I'm like, what the hell? But um, Stu's a guy that has confidence right now. Uh, you know, when he got here last year, it was just catch up, make up, catch up. Um, so, again, sometimes a portal, if you don't get them, and uh, we're going to go try to get some guys. I'm not saying that. But if you don't get them uh, in January, it's really hard for them to make a huge difference. And we've had guys do that. But – I think right now with the year that he had, I, what I'm proud of him about, he didn't give up, you know, and so he's come back here and he's he's in a strong battle for, you know, the starting corner. Sam, what what, what do you thought of Luke? He's had some nice catches up yeah. there. Look, looks like he's moving pretty good. Yeah, you know, after practice, he told me, he talked about his, I just asked him, you know, and he said he feels 100% and, you know, he's strong. Uh, I think where he's improved um, is his route running. You know, he, he he rounded some things off a year ago. I think he's improved that. And I I really like what they did in Indy. I haven't watched it today, but I thought Coach Turner did a really good job in Indy. They're they're playing more physical, and that if you had a knock on Luke, it would be his you know his run blocking, and which I really didn't, but. Um, he's gotten better there too. So uh, he's playing with a stream, extremely high amount of confidence. We've seen um, you guys do a little 12 personnel with Paskey out there. It looks like maybe a guy that you were kind of missing last year in terms of being a physical yeah. blocker. And and also Gum seemed a little timid last year, but he seems a lot more comfortable. Yeah, and that's something, I mean, he really – Gums has really improved. Uh, I think po post – Posca, Posky, Posca or Posky, Posca. Yeah, as you know, I already knew that because I'm. But Posca, it's June Kaj and Posca. Posca got ran over by a tire yesterday, uh, and went out there and practiced today. The whole day's tough. A lot. Guys, that's a, you're gonna love this freaking kid. He is, he's a great guy. You know, you remember Yelta? You know, he he, Yelta. He's kind of that same, you know, toughness and this that and that. And Dave called me and said he got hit in a crosswalk on his scooter. The scooters haven't been good to us so far, but uh, said the tire run over his foot and that he's. I called him last night. Oh, I'll be there, coach. You know, I said okay and. He practices the entire day, but he is something that we needed, just like you said. And and I know this, you know, whether if he gets whipped or whether he doesn't, he's a tough guy that's got a big frame on him. He can also catch the football, but uh, that's something that we were lacking that we went out and got, and I'm very pleased with him too. The kind of scooters that you stand on or sit on? Well, I know the one that Wiggins got hurt on was a standing one. You know, I don't know how fast those go, but. I rode a I rode an electric bike uh, when I was out with Brandon Adams. I rode an electric bike, and uh, I forget where I was. Those things can go pretty fast, even you know carrying a 
you know, a decent load. So I don't know how fast some of other things can go for sure. Um, you guys got big recruiting stuff going on this week. Yeah. I know you can't comment on specific yeah. names, but a junior day. I was curious if you could maybe enlighten us a little bit on maybe some of the things you guys maybe have planned or you know, what we you got a do home run derby. We're going to have a little home run derby in here. And if the weather allows, we're going to take in the baseball game and, and, uh, we have an OV this weekend as well. We had uh, three or four guys in here yesterday. I'm going to have uh, three in here today. And so um, we need to take advantage of it, Trey, because, um, you know, we're going to be gone the next two weekends. And so we're trying to have a little bit a little bit more fun with it. I, my first year here, we, we went out there in the hog pen and, and it was a wonderful junior day, you know, to take them out there. And the fans are crazy out there. Uh, that's the plan for tomorrow if it ever it doesn't rain. It hadn't been canceled. Did the days get canceled? Okay. And so so hopefully we can get out there. Postpone. Hey, uh, this is – I don't even know how to frame this as a question, but it seems to me in the team periods and in the fastballs, there's guys – getting in this open space more on offense just seems like there's a more openness, more variety in what you're doing offensively. Is that, is that a fair assessment or, or what would you think? I think we're finding windows as receivers better than we ever had. If that makes sense. Um, our routes are, they have more freedom to set in holes and understand man versus um, zone coverage. And our quarterback is throwing the ball. Uh, and I think they'll deliver it faster. I'm talking about making their decision faster, but our quarterback is there in tune and uh, is throwing the ball. And then he's, he's throwing him. What did Bobby say? Did he throw him open or throw it on him, one or the other? Stick it to him. I can't remember what his quote was today to the quarterbacks, but uh, I think their, their knowledge of – the offense is so high right now that they're seeing they're in tune with the wideouts, and I think that's why there's a little bit more space right now. And then we're playing more zone. We're playing more cover three than what we have in the past, too. That's that's probably the main answer. You talked about how you had to spend all that time down there in Indy. It feels like maybe you spent a little bit more time with the offensive line in practice, or is that normal or what? No, I, I told Eric when I was uh, – I didn't interview him. You know, I just – when I called him, I said, I'm, I'm going to be your GA. And so, basically, we haven't done one-on-one -on -one pass pro yet because we haven't had to – well, they do, they do it, you know, during team all the time. But um, So, basically, I'm his GA during any individual and then uh, at, during Andy. And then I'm his GA during one-on-one -on -one pass pros and things of that nature. I just said it again. And, uh, but that's, so I got about 30 minutes of responsible individual with the O-line each day. Linebackers. I had a, kind of a, just a couple, but like Spence, he looks great. He out does, there. doesn't he? As good as he looks, then he'd probably be pretty good. Um, Sorry looks real athletic, and then Dean seems to be moving around a bunch yeah. of different spots. He does. I, I, Dean is very, very talented. Can I mean, athletically, very, very talented. Very smart. Um, I think we're all going to really like him because he can run. He made some really nice plays today. Um, I just think – the key to all this is we just got to stay healthy so they can get the reps during spring. And if they will, I think we're going to be fine. Now, I, I'm not telling you that we won't try to add to that room. Uh, we'd be foolish not to. But um, I like the I like those guys just like I think you do too. I, li I like those guys. Seems like you would. I guess a linebacker would wear an earpiece if that's comes. Yeah. But how does that like a quarterback usually stays in the game? So with a linebacker, is it's like. Trading out the earpiece if you sub out or something. Yeah, that was a that big talk, you know, about because they're gonna give you they're gonna give you more than one helmet, you know, but you got you're gonna have to designate who it is like uh 
Like if you took your mic, say your mic linebacker had the earpiece in, and then in, in your third and long situation, your nickel package, it, and you put somebody else in there. The problem is, is he already in the game? Is he not? You're going to have to figure all that kind of stuff out because offensively, obviously, it's easy. It's your quarterback. And if he and your second quarterback's got it on in, you know, his helmet as well. So there's a dot that goes out there and the, and the officials are looking at it. You can only have one one light going on both sides of the ball. So that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge than – Right now, we're not using it on offense, and uh, I don't. I didn't want to go out there and put a helmet on one guy. You know, I, we only have one unit right now, and that's everybody. But so each quarterback doesn't have it right now. They will in the fall. So I didn't want to just put that unit on one guy and just declare the guy. You know, right now, so we just – and it's not anything more than a walkie-talkie Bobby talking to him. So uh, we'll get plenty of reps of that, but I think we'll wait a little bit longer until we decide and try to get a decision of who's who's who we want to put it on. Thanks, Dave. All right, guys, thanks.